فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Inshallah ta'ala, today's benefit that I want you to put forward and to benefit everybody with is an issue that many people present and they bring forward which is issues pertaining to marriage problems. As we're well aware of, there is no problem or there is no issue that a person faces except they will find a solution in the Kitab of Allah and in the Sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But a lot of the times we try not to, or we don't go to those sources to find the uh, answers to our problems. And so what happens is, the issue becomes worse, and we don't find the solution that we're looking for. So here, inshallah ta'ala, is not just a benefit, but it's also those volume of people who call me concerning their family issues and whatnot, that they could be one, who listens to this, inshallah ta'ala, and these benefits, and inshallah ta'ala, to apply it in their relationship, inshallah ta'ala. And this, inshallah ta'ala, benefit revolves around the ayah, وَمِنْ آيَاتِي أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجْعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِقَوْمِ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِقَوْمِ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ Allah starts the ayah by saying, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ from the signs of Allah. What we have to analyze here is, and that we have to keep in mind, is Allah started the ayah by saying, إِنَّ uh, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ from the signs of Allah. So the word here, min is tab'idiyah. It's some of the signs of Allah. So this is not all the signs of Allah, but it's from some of the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we all know that the signs of Allah are two types. There are universal signs and there are legislational signs. There are universal signs, ayat which are referred to as ayat kawniya. And there are signs which are referred to as ayat shar'iya, which are legislational signs. So when you read the Quran, you say, I'm reading this ayah. This is an ayah shar'iya. And also the day and the night, the sun and the moon, all of them are ayat. As Allah said in the Quran, إِنَّ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاخْتِلَافِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ لَآيَاتِ الْأُولِ الْأَلْبَابِ لآيات. There are signs. The day, the night, the sun, the moon. They are what? لآيات. There are signs. And then there's ayat, kawniya, universal signs. And there are those which are around us. And there are ayat which are shari'iyya. And Ibn al-Qayyim has a very good fa'idah regarding this in his book Al-Fawaid. Where he talks about the two types of ayat and he brings fawai the benefits regarding it. And one should go and look at it. So the beginning of the ayah, Allah is saying, Wamin ayati from the signs of Allah. From. Not all of them, but from. Is an khalaqa lakum. That Allah tabarak wa ta'ala created. Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, Khalaqa Allah ta'ala adama. He said, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he created. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he created Adam. Min turab. Allah created him from clay. From the earth. Allah created him. Wa khalaqa hawa min Adam. And he created hawa from Adam. We just took from the ayah. Wa min ayatihi. From the signs of Allah is. An khalaqa lakum. That he created. Abdullah ibn Abbas said here, خَلَقَ اللَّهُ Allah created. He created Adam min turab from the earth and the dust. وَخَلَقَ And he created Hawa min Adam. And Allah created Hawa from Adam. فَجُعِلَ هَمُّ آدَمَ Adam, he's Aspiration, his motive, his drive was placed in what? Fit Turab, in that which he was created from. In the earth. 
وجعل هم حواء أن حواء ها desires and her motive and drive was made في آدم in آدم if anybody today goes to the gatherings of the people they will find that the men tend to talk about their profession because the usul al-makasib the, the or fundamental places where people gain their risk from is the earth the zara the agriculture the money goes back to the cycle of business and finance and it go it's agriculture it's food so we can eat so men talk about their job and what happened and how their job is and how much money they make and that's what they talk about and if they were promoted and etc and the women in their gatherings they talk about their husbands the women they talk about their husbands if the woman does not realize what the man loves and he desires and she doesn't talk to him about that and if the husband does not realize that the wife is into him and he doesn't learn to show her that he who she's into he's also interested in her then this causes a problem That is the second benefit. The first benefit was al-ayat is two types. Ayat kawniya and ayat shara'iya. The second benefit is from the part of the ayah min ayat an khalaqa lakum. The third benefit that is in the ayah is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says li taskunu ilayha wa min ayati an khalaqa lakum min anfusikum azwajan li taskunu ilayha. According to the muhaqqiqeen al-rabbaniyeen min al-ulama from the scholars who are deeply rooted in following the textual evidences they mention that anna al-ayah mu'allala that this ayah has been given a reasoning Allah is saying to us here amin ayati from the signs of Allah is an khalaqa lakum Allah created from you, Nabi like Adam. Hawa, why did we do that? Reason for that. What was our aim and objective behind that? Allah says, لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا So you can find tranquility in her. So the reason why a man is with a woman and a woman is with a man is لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا To find tranquility. A relationship that is not based upon tranquility, it's a relationship which is fashal. It's a relationship that's but upon what? Destruction. لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا That the two parties are finding tranquility in their relationship. وَلِذَلِكَ That's what the ayah is saying from the angle of what? مَنْطُوق From the angle of what it's telling us directly. The reverse understanding which is the مفهوم المخالفة The reverse understanding is that if a person is not married then he doesn't have sakina and tranquility. So his situation is what? He is in a situation that is halatul al-dhab. He's in a situation of confusion and lack of tranquility. This is what the ayah shows us from the angle of mafhum al-mukhalafa. Walidalika, because of that, what a person should gain from a relationship that they're in, whether it's the female, the woman, or it's the man is a sakina to tumatnina. They have to find tranquility in their hearts and they have to find joy within. But pay attention, the Sharia doesn't leave us and just tell us what one needs to find somewhere, but does not leave us confused and not tell us how to gain it and how to have it. And in the same ayah, Allah mentions how to gain it in a relationship. He subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً And Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he made. Now what's amazing is before I go to مَوَدَّةً and رَحْمَةً I need to touch on the word جَعَلَ And when we were doing the sharah of Kitab Sharh al-Sunnah al-Imam al-Barbahari rahimahullah, we mentioned that 
the issue of khalaqa and ja'ala and the issue of when it's muta'adda bi bi maf'ulin or muta'adda bi maf'ulain we talked about that to refute the issue of the mu'tazila but here we find that Allah used wa min ayati an khalaqa Allah created and then after that he says ja'ala and they both mean the same why is it that he used khalaqa at the beginning and then he used ja'ala in the second part the scholars they mention Ibn al-Qayyim wa ghayruh they mention that the word khalaqa is something that takes place duf'atan wahida one time meaning Allah tabarak wa ta'ala he created hawa from adam one time kun bi fayakun and it became and it happened but the issue of al-mawadda al-rahma is something that's gradual it's not something Allah tabarak wa ta'ala he makes it duf'atan wahida it's not something Allah tabarak wa ta'ala he makes it all at once but it's something he makes through what he makes based upon gradual time when the two parties and the spouse spend together the mawadda and the rahma increases if we look at the part where Allah tabarak wa ta'ala says after that وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً This is a very powerful point regarding the ayah, which is a solution, which is a way and a means for two married couples to find sakina, which was just mentioned right now, is these two. مَوَدَّةً الرحمة is what would bring in a relationship tranquility. When the wife sees her husband, she finds joy and happiness. When the husband sees his wife, he finds joy and happiness and warmth. In his eyes and his heart is in the ayah Mawadda al Rahma. Mawadda in the ayah is to fulfill the desires of both parties. A husband he re he needs in a relationship to fulfill his desires. In the hadith of the Messenger alayhi salatu was salam, he said. That if one of you goes out and he sees a woman and she amazes him how she looks and this then moves his desires the Prophet وسلم, he says let him go come to his wife the, the ziyada like some of the narrations mentioned that whatever is with her the woman he saw is with his wife that ziyada is ziyada ghayra sahiha it's not sahih it's not authentic but the part that says that whatever he sees, he should go and fulfill his desires with his wife is to show you that the relationship is built upon the issue of shahwa. And so the husband needs to find answers for his desires. And the opposite is the woman. The woman left her parents' house where she had food, she had shelter, and she came to your house she needs you to fulfill her desires and intimacy. Well, you find a lot of people whose relationships, either the woman is cheating or the man is cheating because there is a deficiency on one, per, one party side on the issues pertaining to fulfilling the desires of the other. And a relationship that lacks this, again, it's towards the path of destruction. The second part of the ayah says وَرَحْمَةً Affection and mercy and compassion. The relationship is not just intimacy. It is not just sexual desires. It is based upon mercy and rahmah. Compassion and kindness and affection towards the other. But what's amazing here is two things. Allah mentioned these two together and not separately. Because separately, independently, each and every one of them, a person can find it other than a halal relationship. A man can go today and can pay a, a prostitute and his desires will be fulfilled. But he will not get rahmah and affection. And a man can get rahmah from his mother and father and auntie. But to get both of them 
mawadda and rahma simultaneously one time Allah has placed that in the relationship of the wife and the husband that whilst these two individuals are fulfilling each other's desires they are also able to what they are also also able to show each other affection and mercy but what is amazing is that the ayah put mawadda before rahma and that is because intimacy and, and, uh, and shahwa being fulfilled is what leads to the rahmah to occur. Whereas when you look at those huh, relationships which are haram, majority of those complain and regret. When he commits the zina and the haram relationship, he feels pain inside his heart. What did I just do wrong? How did it all go wrong? What am I doing? Am I all right? The person starts to... You see? Whereas the relationship based upon halal, you find that the, the more that the person has relationship with the family and his wife, the more the love and the rahmah increases. The other reason, the other wisdom behind why muwadda was put first before rahmah is when you're young, في بداية النكاح and في بداية الزواج, at the early stages of marriage, it revolves a lot of the percentage around intimacy and relationship. But when you grow old, the relationship dies out, uh, the intimacy dies out. And it starts to become weak. And the two parties are only here with each other for affection and rahmah. Holding hands. For years, maybe they've not had no relationship because they're old. But the rahmah is there. Then Allah wa ta'ala, He says after that, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, Inna fi dhalika la ayat. All of that which has been mentioned here, there are ayat. All of that, there are ayat. What's amazing, brothers and sisters who are watching it, is Allah started the ayah by saying, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ And He made it mufrad, singular. And the word ayat, when he mentioned it at the end, he made it plural. And that means when a relationship starts, it's only ayah. But when you go into the relationship and you stay there for long, you see ayat. Signs. But those ayat are not for everybody. Those ayat are not for? They're not for everybody. Who are they for? إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتِ لِقَوْمِ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ There are only signs for a people who are pondering and analyzing and thinking about the hikam and the wisdom. وَلِذَلِكَ الْإِمَامُ الْإِمَامُ الشَّاطِبِ رَحِمَ اللَّهُ بِسْحَقَ الشَّاطِبِ in his kitab al-Muwafaqat. He mentions the maqsad al-shar'i. This is the tadabbur and the fakur. And he mentions, he said, I pondered on the wisdom and the hikmah behind marriage. And he said, I realize it's children. Biggest. Al-Imam al-Shatib, rahimahullah. Because two mother, the mother and the father may have a fight. And there might occur amongst them dispute. The children sometimes might do something funny and they both laugh and the dispute is over. They both laugh at how dumb they are. Or the children will bring them close. From the wisdoms that the ayat that are in marriage, my brothers, is, is the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is They are a clothing for you, a garment for you, and you're a garment for them. This is from the hikam and the wisdoms behind the sharia. And it is pondering. If one sits today, and I'm sure, and I will inshallah, to sit down and to analyze what the clothes does for a person, for your body, every single thing what the clothes does is what a relationship does. The clothes gives you beauty. Your wife, being married to her, is a beauty that you present to your family members. The clothing, it protects you from the cold and the sun directly going to your body, your wife. 
and being married protects you f your, your, your shahwa your desires the clothing it protects your aura no one knows how you look your deficiency the way your body looks your wife is the same she protects your aura for you and the same for the husband the wife her husband protects her aura for her and keeps her secret a secret and does not talk to anybody about it Inna fi dhalika la ayat. I finally wanted to conclude by saying and this is something that we need to take into consideration who is the one who created us? Allah who is the one who legislated? Allah it is impossible brothers that the creation and the legislation go against each other this is one qa'idah I always and I elaborate on فَلَا يَصْلُحُ this is a qa'idah you need to memorize فَلَا يَصْلُحُ حَالَ it is impossible the situation of the one who created opposes that which he legislates your creation can only go in accordance to the one who created you how he legislates for you this is very important فَلَا يَصْلُحُ حَالَ مَنْ خَلَقَ إِلَّا بِمَا شَرَعَ there's no other way out for one who's created except that which has been legislated. إِذَنْ وَلِي ذَلِكَ إِبْنُ تَيْمِيَ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ إِبْنُ تَيْمِيَ He speaks about الْخَلْقُ وَالشَّرْعُ That there's no conflict between the two. And I'll give you guys an example. وَبِالْمِثَالِ يَتَّضُحُ الْمَقَالِ And the reason why I say this is because a lot of the times people think when they go through problems that the Sharia doesn't have a result, a, a solution for their problems. That's not the case. The Sharia does have a solution for you. But it's just you haven't gone to it. I'll give you guys an example. Allah wa ta'ala today He created us. And He created us with what? He created us with a quwa, a strength that's within us. And He created us with some gharaiz. We have this instinct in us. Is that we always want to know the unseen. At least isn't that the case? We want to know the unseen. Well, that's why if you look at history, people made myths. صح? Gods and, you know, things, myth stories. Huh? Once upon a time stuff. Yeah? Because it is a strength built within the human being to want to know the future. The Sharia didn't just, Allah did not just create that in us and not give a solution to it. So what did he do? Subhanahu wa ta'ala. He gave us the solution of Ashratu Sa'a, the signs of the hour. The signs which are major and the minor signs. He told us about Jannah and that which is in it. He told us about Nar and how it looks. He told us, subhanahu wa ta'ala, the people of Jannah and their characteristics. He told us the questions that are going to come in the day of judgment. But the difference between the two now is what? This is kalam which is truthful. وَتَبَّتْ كَلِمَةُ رَبِّكَ صِدْقًا وَعَدْلًا Allah tabarak wa ta'ala and everything he says صِدْقٌ فِي الْأَخْبَارِ وَعَدْلُ فِي الْأَحْكَامِ Truthful in everything he says and he's just in everything he judges. Subhanahu wa ta'ala So don't ever think to yourself that your basic instinct that is within you and the issues that you have as an individual that the sharia doesn't have an answer for it. It does wallah. And they are not conflating and going against one another. Rather, they go together. That is benefits that inshallah ta'ala that I wanted to share with you all. Anything that which I have said that was incorrect. فَإِنَّهُ مِنِّي وَمِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ وَاللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ بَرِئَ آمِنًا سُبْحَانَكَ اللَّهُمَّ بِحَمْدِكَ أَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ أَسْتَغْفِرُكَ وَأَتُوبُ إِلَيْ